Tesla divides opinion like no other car. You either love this electric car from California or you hate it. So we're going to find out how good Tesla really is and whether there's a car out there that can beat the premium model, the Model X. The Tesla's first challenger, the Audi e-tron Sportback. High-tech luxury from Germany. Fully electric, 435 horsepower, and three electric motors. Auto expertise and love all rolled into one. Next up, the Maserati Levante, the embodiment of the good old combustion engine. Talk about eye candy. And it's not just nice to look at. Under the hood lurks a 580 horsepower eight cylinder by Ferrari. The Cupra Formentor has its own share of Mediterranean flair too. The new luxury car from Seat leads the way when it comes to design. And it packs a punch. The 310 horsepower turbo power is right off the Volkswagen shelf. Despite its Nordic cool, the Volvo V60 cross country gets car lovers hearts racing. With its higher chassis and four wheel drive, it has all the practical advantages of the station wagon. The interior is a mix of Scandinavian chic and sustainability, and its 250 horsepower engine is nothing to be sneezed at. Then there's the Kia Sorento. It's got room for seven people or plenty of luggage. The only one that comes near that is the Tesla. The Kia's impressive interior also boasts perfect connectivity. And the brand new 200 horsepower diesel engine will probably be the last to be specially developed for a car. Okay, we are now here at the ADAC driving area in Linden near Berlin. And here we have provided some very tough challenges for our cars. This is head tester Jochen Freerichs. He's put hundreds of cars through their paces and taken them to their limits. First up is the Audi. Plenty of power and traction, but like all electric cars, the e-tron Sportback is heavy. Very heavy. With two and a half tons to push around the narrow winding track, is there any room for a sporty feeling? Jochen, this is a real Audi Quattro. Does it feel like one? Yes, it's a really sportive car. It's the most sportive electric vehicle I ever driven. Now it's the Maserati's turn. Its Ferrari motor drives it so hard, it's a wonder the tarmac doesn't crack. But is that enough to make it a fast car in the turns? At 2.1 tons, it's got 400 kilos on the electric cars. And this track asks a lot of gears and brakes. Jochen gives his all and crosses the line in almost the same time as the Audi. Time for the Tesla. Victory seems certain. The ludicrous mode mobilizes 796 horsepower. Surely that's more than enough. 26.8 seconds puts it in a dead heat with the Audi. But... So, Jochen. The Tesla is the most powerful car here. Does it feel like this? Do you feel that? It has a lot of power, but it has not a good performance on the racetrack. So I think it's didn't made for this. You can order pet food during your driving on the race track. That's perfect. But if you if you want this, I don't want it. Last up, the Seat Cupra. At 1.6 tons, it's the lightweight in the pack, and its 310 horsepower are more than enough on the curvy track. And thanks to its nifty gearbox, it finishes the course in the best time, 26.2 seconds. So Jochen, the Cupra really looks sporty. And does it drive like this? Yeah, more than this. This car is perfect for this track. It's really fast. It's faster than the Maserati. Mm -hmm. I feel, uh, feel for my own. And I think it's the fastest car on this track from all the cars we compare. We will see. Of course, the Volvo and the Kia have to pass the handling test too, but we will spare them the stopwatch. All Jochen is interested in is they feel safe on the road, and he has no complaints. 
easygoing understeerers, both of them. The next challenge is the acceleration test. With a little twist, we're using a wet track. The friction coefficient here is roughly what you would expect on wet cobblestones. The Audi and the Tesla face off five times, and five times the Audi comes out on top. Now we can see what 30 years of experience building Quattro drives is worth. The electronics control the three electric engines with such split-second precision that the Tesla's extra power can't keep up with it. But the Tesla does save face by beating the Maserati in all five tests. Now it's time for the off-road section. A quick warm-up on a steep sand track poses no major problems for any of the five. And why would it? The real test is the waterfall. When you go up there, take the line of least resistance. You can tell by the flow of the water. Water also takes the line of least resistance. That's where the ground is least uneven. This is important. If you have the option, choose the off-road mode. In the Kia, take either snow or mud. We've set it to mud. What's vital on this slope, which is really slippery because it's wet, is not to lose momentum. So, never take your foot entirely off the gas. It's also a mistake to give it too much gas, because that takes away the traction. So keep your foot on the gas, but be sure it's neither too much nor too little. You have to get a feel for it. Only two of the cars have enough ground clearance for this test. First out is the Maserati. It bounces up the riverbed like a mountain goat, an unstoppable blend of power and grip. No problem for the Kia either, but for different reasons. Its electronic traction control makes for a smooth ride despite the rough surface. If only life could always be that easy. The last test is for the electric cars only, charging. And the Audi needs to be charged frequently. In these wintry conditions, the 95 kilowatt hour battery was often flat after just 200 kilometers. And you need the right charging card. Charging itself is fast. After a good half hour, there are another 200K in the car. All the same, limited range is the big problem for the Audi. The only way to save battery is to take it easy on the car. The Tesla is another animal altogether when it comes to charging. One battery charge gets 561 kilometers in the WLTP test. We got 400 kilometers out of it. And there's no need for a charging card because the car and the charging station recognize each other when you plug in the cable. Time for the grand finale and the answer to the question, can anyone beat the Tesla, and how? The Maserati would clean up if it weren't so expensive. Prices with the Ferrari engine start at 134,000 euros. Our test model goes for 155,000, making it by far the most expensive car in our competition. The Cupra is the people's champion. Small, light, sporty, and at 45,000 euros, you could almost say it's a bargain. The Volvo is easily the most sensible. At 50,000 euros, it's proof that station wagons beat SUVs any day. The Kia has its nose in front on several counts. Space, 
fuel efficiency, multimedia equipment. It has a starting price of 41,000 euros. The car we tested cost 57,000. But you do get a lot of bang for your bucks. The Audi easily wins most categories. Great gearbox, finely finished, powerful but intelligent drive. But the price is high at 96,000 euros, and the range is too short. Which leaves us with the Tesla. Starting at 103,000 euros, it's even more expensive than the Audi, but is considerably more spacious, and its drive is unrivaled. The finishing is not quite up to scratch, though. So we are now standing here in front of the construction site of the new Tesla Gigafactory at Brandenburg. They want to build up to 500,000 cars a year here. This is sensational. But the question was, can you beat a Tesla? How to beat a Tesla? And the answer is, yes, you can. Car manufacturers from Asia and Europe have proven they can. They build better cars. But the power of innovation, the spirit of creativity, Therefore, the crown this time goes to Tesla. Well done. 